Hello, future respiratory therapist. Uh, we're going to wrap up the ABG interpretation series uh, today with metabolic alkalosis and then a uh, mixed disturbances coming out here very soon also. Now, when we talk about metabolic alkalosis, you need to uh, kind of understand what might cause this and, and uh, what effect this is going to have on your patient's respiratory drive. See, so so a lot of times, like I've said before, we find ourselves thinking like, oh, that's a metabolic problem. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Well, that, that's definitely not true because it definitely matters for the patient. But also from a respiratory therapy standpoint, a metabolic acidosis matters uh, because it may cause an increased workload on our respiratory system. And a metabolic alkalosis matters because it may actually cause a decrease in the respiratory drive. And that's going to be a problem when we're trying to get people off mechanical ventilation. So, so don't ever think that it's just a metabolic problem and it's not my concern because that's not necessarily true. Okay. So getting into this metabolic alkalosis. Now, just like I did with the other videos, we're going to start off with absolute normal. So this is 7.40 CO2 of 40 and a bicarb of 24. Now we know this to be normal. Okay. Now what happens with metabolic alkalosis is the exact opposite of a metabolic acidosis. Now, if you remember in the metabolic acidosis video, and if you haven't watched it, I'm going to encourage you to go back and watch it. I'll link to it at the top of this video here in just a second. Remember when we talked about metabolic acidosis and we said the problem is either that you've lost your supply of bicarb or you have gained non-volatile acids and that's what uh, the problem is with metabolic acidosis. Now the exact opposite is true with metabolic alkalosis. One of two things, either you've lost non-volatile acids or you have gained bicarb. Okay. So you kind of have to ask yourself, you know, what, you know, what, what, what's the problem here? Um, and we'll talk about some of those as we come up with them. Okay. So here we go. <clears throat> we know that when we have a metabolic alkalosis because it's an alkalosis. We know that our pH is going to go up. It's going to go greater than 7.45. So let's just go seven, five, five. Now, initially this is the state of uncompensated metabolic alkalosis. Your CO2 stays normal and your bicarb goes up. Okay, so let's just say 35. This is uncompensated metabolic alkalosis. That's what this one is here. Okay, now what could cause this to happen? Well, lots of different things such as, um, let's say you could lose excessive acids through um, uncontrollable uh, prolonged vomiting could put you in a state to where your bicarb appears elevated and you have a metabolic alkalosis. You could also gain bicarb through the excess over prolonged use of diuretics. And so depending on which diuretic it is and how it functions, uh, I'm not going to say all of them, but most of them will lead to a metabolic alkalosis with an increased absorption back of bicarb. So you'll see a metabolic alkalosis there. Okay. Now what happens here is that the body doesn't like being at this state of, alkal of, of alkalosis. It doesn't like being 755. So the body says, if my bicarb is going to stay at 35, then... I'm going to <clears throat> allow the respiratory system to compensate for this alkalosis. So what does the respiratory system start to do? It allows CO2 to go up. So let's just say 48. Okay. So now it has gone up above 45 in an effort to bring this pH back down to within normal range, but it hasn't got there yet, right? So the CO2 is up. It's brought our pH back down, but not close enough. It hasn't got us back into normal range. So what has to happen here? 
So this is partially compensated. Metabolic alkalosis. It's a metabolic because our bicarb is elevated. It's an alkalosis because we're on an alkalotic side and it's partially compensated because our, our compensatory mechanism, our respiratory system, has allowed the CO2 to rise in effort to bring the pH down. Okay, now, this is going to become fully compensated as the CO2 continues to rise. So, bicarb still is hanging out here at 35. CO2 goes up to, let's just say, 53. And this comes down to 7.45. Okay, so 7.45, 53, and 35. This is now fully compensated. Metabolic alkalosis. Again, alkalosis because it's on the alkalotic side of normal. Metabolic because of these two components. If this was a respiratory disturbance, it would have to be, the pH would be on the acidotic side, but it's not. See, the pH tells you who's causing the problem. Whatever side of the pH scale that your pH is on, that tells you who the problem causer is. And the other one is compensating or trying to compensate. So, metabolic because bicarb is the problem, pushing the pH up. But since we're in normal range and our CO2 is elevated, this makes it fully compensated along with the pH being back in normal range. Okay, now... Let me give you a real life scenario on how you utilize this information to understand what's going on with your patients, okay? You have this blood gas. Okay, here's your blood gas. Now, don't Henderson Hasselbach me. I'm sure these numbers aren't exactly correct, but you get the, the gist of what I'm saying here. I'm just helping you re re recognize this, okay? So we had a lady who was on mechanical ventilation, and, and actually, actually, this number is actually different. This was actually 39, and this pH was much, much more alkalotic. Okay, so this was what it looked like. This lady was in uh, full uh, mechanical ventilation, full support, uh, volume control, assist control, so uh, ACVC, and we had multiple failed SBTs. So they would switch over to an SBT, guess what would happen? She would go apneic, right? She would say, um, wait a second, uh, I don't need to breathe. Right? Because her pH is alkalotic and her CO2 is going, well, let me, I got to get up. I have to rise to get this pH down to allow me to even have a drive to breathe. Because right now, I don't have a drive. I don't need to breathe right now. My CO2 is good. My pH is alkalotic. That tells me not to breathe. Right? So the lady, uh, she wouldn't breathe. And so they would put her back on the vent. You know, 20 seconds, of apnea alarm goes off, 20 seconds, she's apneic. 20 seconds, she's apneic. Every single time, right? This went on for three different days. We finally came in and we took care of this lady on a clinical rotation. And I told the students what I think was going on. I said, this is, I think, this is the problem. And so this was a student's question. It was a great question. She said, well, how come the CO2 is not already compensating? If it's been like this for three days, well, the answer is because we're in volume control. You understand that the respiratory system can only compensate for a metabolic disturbance when you allow the patient's true spontaneous system to do the compensation. But if the, if the brain, if the neural drive to breathe is saying we need to compensate, so let's turn our minute ventilation down. Let's say, let's say. Let's say the, the neural drive to breathe is wanting to turn your minute ventilation down to three liters per minute to allow your CO2 to go up to compensate for this. 
It can't do that if you're in VCAC with a set minute volume of six or seven liters per minute. See, so this CO2 is 39 because the mechanical ventilator ran by a respiratory therapist is keeping it there. So this, this will never compensate because we won't allow the compensation to happen. So we go to an SBT. We start a spontaneous breathing trial. So we, what we did was we started, we put the patient in a spontaneous breathing trial and I turned the apnea alarm up to 60 seconds. Okay, 60 seconds went, the apnea alarm went off, I reset it another 60 seconds. The apnea alarm went off again, Reset it, another 60 seconds. So I reset it twice. It took this, this patient more than two minutes of apnea for her CO2 to rise, which brought her pH down, which then gave her the stimulation to keep a normal pattern. Once that happened, the, per, the, the, the patient did perfectly on the rest of her SBT and was extubated within the hour. And this is what I'm talking about. You have to be savvy to this as a respiratory therapist. This is why you have to know your blood gases going in to and starting your SBTs. Because your patients say, well, my patient's apneic, they're apneic, they're apneic. Well, there's got to be a reason they're apneic. Patients just don't breathe. People, humans, men and women, we don't just not breathe. We have a reason when we're not breathing. Your job as a respiratory therapist is to figure it out. Okay? So I've also seen a similar situation to this where the patient was on uh, Lasix and they were, had been receiving them for a lot and they needed the diuretic, but this was the result. And they changed the patient to Diamox. And Diamox is a different type of diuretic that actually leads to the excretion of bicarb and causes a metabolic acidosis. So if you know this is happening and you're like, yeah, a patient can't get off the vent because they have no drive because of this metabolic alkalosis from the excessive diuretics, let's change the diuretics up and let's create a different scenario that may initiate, may cause the patient to breathe, right? So if you switch it up and you go to, you go to, you cause a metabolic acidosis, which we've already talked about, but I'll put it up here again. And this goes down to 18, and this is 39. So 7.32 and 18. Now, when you do an SBT or now from a spontaneous breathing perspective, this person is going to breathe more. They're going to have an increased neural drive to breathe to help bring this back up to the normal range to where the person with an alkalosis is going to have a decreased neural drive to breathe to allow the CO2 to go up in efforts to bring the pH back down. It's the way we're made to compensate, people. That's what it all comes down to. There's nothing, it's just the way we do it. And you have to understand it because your patient can look like they're working really, really hard in response to a metabolic acidosis, which they might be, or they may be apneic and you think they're over sedated when it's really this metabolic alkalosis that's causing the problem, okay? Hey guys, hope everybody's being safe. Appreciate everybody watching. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. Let me know what you think about the video. I'd love to hear it, and I hope everybody's having a great day.